Sometimes you have to be careful about selecting edge loops because they won't always necessarily get exactly what you think they're gonna. So it's always a good idea to keep sort of an eye on those. Um, so like I was saying earlier, I'm really excited about trying to do this curve that is in this because it's, it's gonna be fairly fun to sort of tweak it out and figure out exactly how to get that curve um, that's in the concept art. Um, I'm starting from a very blocky piece of geometry here. Um, but the chamfer tool is pretty powerful in getting exactly what you need. So I'm going to go in here and uh, activate my chamfer tool. Um, and pull it on down. So it's still looking pretty blocky. But not for long. Trying to decide exactly how far. So <coughs> it seems like the curve comes down just right to the edge. Um, so that's what I'm trying to sort of get in here. There we go. All right now, how do I get the curve out of that? So if I up the segments, it's actually going to make just what I need. Um, though uh, it's also rounded off in this direction, so I'm losing some of what could be here. So rather than do that chamfer first, I'm actually going to chamfer these edges. Now it looks like I've screwed my mesh up royally, um, but that's just not the case. Uh, although, yeah, I was afraid that was going to happen. Okay, so maybe doing that top one is going to be more viable. Okay. Um, as rapidly as I made this, I feel like um, messing around with it for a little bit and getting exactly what I'm, I'm after uh, is probably not out of the question. Um, if I screw it up, I can just make it again. Uh, so let's see. Loop. I also um, don't necessarily need to worry about this side, because if I want, I can just do the symmetry modifier. So uh, it's also something to keep in mind as well. Told you this was going to be fun. <laughs> uh, I think this might be the biggest challenge for this model thus far. Okay, okay, I, I like where that's going. I like where that's going. Um, I'm rock your jive here. think something that might actually be holding me up here is these edges right here. I think those and these edges here too uh, are actually fouling things up a bit. So let me get rid of those and see if this thing is going to work a little better just on principle there. Yes. Okay, see, if you remember before, um, those edges that were going straight across were wanting to direct the chamfer straight across as well. Um, now, however, it's a lot more uh, closely angled to what we have in the concept art. And this is going to be considerably easier to chamfer those uh, edges that go around here too, I think. So let me apply that. Go ring loop. Yes.
edges right here. And this is where sort of trial and error comes in to, to modeling a little bit. Because um, I, I, I really want to get the shape pretty spot on. So just messing around with the model and seeing where that takes me. Um, also making sure I don't have the bottom half of the thing uh, selected. In that stead, I think I'm actually going to detach this to another sub-object here. Uh, I will probably... yeah, okay, cool. I'm actually really glad that this is its own element. Um, as well as the fact that it does it's hollow right now, because that gives me a lot of leeway uh, to come in later and uh, add things like... Uh, a shell holding the thing up, like wood beams going across horizontally underneath the thing, uh, adding a little bit of visual interest when the camera comes in, you know, like pans in close to the thing. So now that we've done that, um, I actually want to take these edges here and just move them out. Because what's happening when I chamfer this is these edges are sort of colliding with one another and it's, it's basically screwing everything up to object. Zero, maybe? Yes. Sweet. Boop. Ring. Chamfer. Yeah, I think in order to get exactly what I'm after, which is effectively this just without all these anomalies in it, I'm going to have to do this chamfer and then effectively clean the model up after. Um, because this is definitely the shape that I'm after. Uh, it's just a matter of making sure that it doesn't do weird stuff like come off of that and you know, that sort of thing. And also, obviously, not give me garbage. Uh, in my mesh. So, I might move this further, further out there. See how, see how far this actually goes out. Yeah, it wants me to, the, the concept art wants it fairly flush, but I feel like after I get the, the curve right, I can come back in with like a freeform deform um, modifier and just pull everything in tighter. Um, yeah, let's, uh, let's do that center object thing again. There we go. Set that to zero as well. Oh, that's why. Okay, this actually isn't at zero. I can fix that later, though. Alright, so once again, grab this edge. Loop, ring, chamfer. Alright, so that is the curve I am looking for. Hit OK. And once I do this, actually, uh, cancel. I do want to save where I'm at thus far. Given that I haven't saved yet and I've been modeling for an hour and a half now, um, I don't recommend that. Because uh, if the program were to crash on me right now, I would have to go dig into AutoBack and make sure that uh, I didn't lose more than 15 or 20 minutes. I've got, I've got AutoBack saving about every 15 minutes, I think, but still, that's 15 minutes worth of work that I would have lost. And if the AutoBacks had been corrupted, that's the entire hour and, hour and a half, um, which is even worse. Files, hats. Mm -hmm. up to environment, buildings, band shell. Save. Okay, now that I have a save point, got selected what I want selected. Ring, collapse. So 
there's still some weirdness here that I'll have to get rid of. Um, yeah. Better yet, rather than collapsing the rings, I'll just remove the edges of the loops. There's a distinction to be made there, but it's really technical. Um, so if you notice, let me undo this. Let's say I were to continue doing the uh, collapse rings like I was doing. Ring collapse, right? Ring collapse. So the curve of the line is pretty straightforward here, but if you notice, the further up it goes, the more screwed up the, the curve gets. I don't want to mess that curve up if I don't have to. So if I select the loops and remove those, it's much more likely to keep my curve intact because of the angle that the loops go to. See? So now, instead of having a screwed up pointy thing that was there, um, I have this sort of straight across uh, that keeps my curve much more intact. Um, and it's sort of trial and error, like I was saying, uh, as to which one is better on your present model. Uh, there's no way of knowing before you actually model the thing. Loop, remove. Loop, remove. Now rather than go and clean up the garbage mesh that's over here a second time, I'm just going to drop a symmetry modifier on it and blow that away. There we go. Collapse. Remove. We don't need that. If I can never find. Ah. Um, so if you notice right now, uh, it's, it's very faceted looking. And that's because I haven't set my smoothing groups at all yet. So let me do that real quick. Uh, 